The worst is yet to come. Not only a warning for this video, but also the name of Onision's unreleased book that may or may not be shipped around to publishers right now. So uh, this book that I got my hands on and read is Peak Onision. You've been warned. No further warnings. Because the worst is yet to come has a lot of meanings to it. But first off, I should say that the worst is yet to come is a romance novel. But not your everyday romance novel. No, no, no. An X-rated romance novel with all the hot steamy action you could ever want. The worst is yet to come is peak fantasy fulfillment, but I don't really know for who. I have a few guesses over who this book could be for, but it is not that hot steamy fantasy fulfillment that you'd see in Barnes & Noble. This isn't one of those hot man on the cover type books. You'd think it is, and you'd be excused for thinking it is, but no, no, no. This is not a hot man on the buff cover. This is a drama that so happens to have nothing but X-rated material throughout it. And, you know, when we look at romance novels, there's two types of them. There's the hot buff man cover, and those don't usually take themselves too seriously. They're just a fun romp. And then you got the minimalist design that's plaguing every single book cover in existence, and those books want to be taken seriously. This book wants to be taken seriously, but also it wants to have its hot man cover. So it's not um, appropriate. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Let's get into it. Our story stars Olivia, who, you know, in books like these should be the every woman, possibly in her 30s, should be relatable to that type of audience. You know, a little bit awkward, a little bit charming, very career focused, hasn't had a really good man in her life for a long time, at least that's what she tells herself. The reader, not Olivia, but you know, she'll say that too. And then she meets a mysterious man who's rich and has chains and whips and it's exciting and Mr. X is trapped in some love triangle between Olivia and another woman and, you know, not to reinvent the wheel with the romance novels here. We're just trying to have everybody have a good time. So, how does the worst is yet to come start? Well... So, this book starts with Captain Lou Albano putting on his breast prizano. Breast prizano. Oof, a little bit of a Freudian slip there. <laughs> So you get it's a me, a Mario, and he's unceremoniously abusing his mushroom power-up. Uh, he makes like Flood from Sunshine real quick and gets to Delfino Plaza, making it look like a slip and slide if you catch my drift. But the plaza is not having it. It's like 100 degrees, the water evaporates the second it touches. Hopefully I've obfuscated the reality of the situation enough. Delfino Plaza is Olivia, and Flood is his dad. Anyway, for you sweet summer children, Mario in this equation is basically the quintessential UB. If you don't know what a UB is, that basically stands for ugly bastard. It's a tag that people engage in when engaging with animated exploits on the internet. And it's not a tag I enjoy. I, I don't enjoy that tag. It's not really me. I'm more of a... I'm more of a these type of things, but you know, some people, they're these type of things and they're wrong. I'm shaming you. So let's get this out of the way real quick. Uh, the writing is hilariously bad. Basically, Onision goes to the rigmarole of describing Mario as Mario. Uh, but not saying that he's Mario, which is fine, but then he sticks his hand in a cookie jar again and just says he looks like Mario, which defeats the purpose of describing him looking like Mario because now I know he's Mario. How many times can I say Mario? Mario. It's really funny. Um, Olivia comes off as being in dire straits and uh, she's fatherless. Um, which really shows Onision's like opinions about women sleeping, sneaking through, you know. She has the whole sins of the father character trope, you know, that she's craving a figure to give her guidance in her life because she's a bit of a wreck. And, um, you know, I, I don't need to infer any of this, by the way. It was all just straight up told to me that her father was a terrible person and all that. The first chapter is described as greasy, and if you were just looking for the worst kind of, like, written smut possible, I mean, I mean, this is that, but you could probably find it better somewhere else. Also, I mean, there's an alternate reality where I had to pay to get this, so, you know. Luckily, though, we don't have to live with Mario too long because he drops dead mid-pump. Um, it's all very uncomfortable and um, described as being uh, an enjoyable experience, but mm, the idea of consent is questionable. <laughs> Mind you, uh, we're only into the first chapter here, and it is loaded with spelling errors. The grammatical flubs, the goofs, the gaffs, they're all littered throughout this serious novel with all these X-rated scenes. It just comes off as very, like, inappropriate, but like in a child wrote this kind of way. Like, the tone is terrible. It, it's like someone intercut the lady, like, is in the beach bathtub thing, this thing. I'm not in the beach, this is a bathtub. 
No body of water is safe without a lifeguard. It's two feet deep, lady. You're, what are you doing here? But like, imagine if you were watching that and then somebody just put Schindler's List in the middle of it. You know, that's how bad the tone is. One of the things that, um, I, I mean, you know, for me, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, a no, a non-starter, you know, um, is the non-con, which apparently Onision's a big fan of non-con um, because it's a frequent event and there's only like five chapters of this book. So, you know, take that as you will. But yeah, hey, man, look, I enjoy spicy carnal desires. I, I will accept things with a believable hand wave in your garden variety doujinshi, but you know, uh, this is just reading like I'm reading a felony. This is more like a true crime that just so happens to go into explicit detail about the veininess of the vegetables, you know what I mean? If this video has ads, I'll eat my socks. But if it doesn't, make sure to support me on Patreon because, well, are you gonna read this book? I don't think not. Uh, so give me a dollar for, you know, like reparations or something. <laughs> so this is the moment where I'm supposed to feel bad for Olivia. I'm supposed to say, oh, you know, the way that Olivia is portrayed is very demeaning to women and, you know, it's tragic what's happening here. But I can't really feel that way about Olivia because uh, Olivia's not an every woman. She's, um, she's like Patrick Bateman. Uh, it's very out of pocket and it comes at the end of the chapter, uh, but Olivia, and again, this is something that is explicitly mentioned for some reason. Uh, apparently Olivia is a racist. Uh, this is a Native American child. Again, that was like mentioned. And, and she threatens to lynch the Native American child in vivid detail, as if she had been plotting out the murder of this random small child forever. And um, then Olivia just leaves and then the chapter ends. And so we are just left with this feeling of, wow, this was a not fun experience, but then also she's like psychotic in like the most criminal way. So I don't feel bad. <laughs> Uh, chapter two, I, how do I how do I cover this? It, it, it's more non-con, and then there's um, there's some corpse defilement. Uh, keeping it brief, this is basically the chapter about Olivia's tragic backstory, and it introduces the white knight love interest, who's like this cop who plays by his own rules. You know, he's everything the right kind of rebel for a romance novel should be. He's kind and caring, but also he's a bit of a fox and plays by his own rules. He just he just can't be tied down by the normal conventions of legal procedures, which, I mean, you know, in, 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 in current year, um, apparently they're very loose legal procedures. <laughs> However, Kane takes that to the next level by um, beating the hell out of the non-con corpse defiling father figure of Olivia. Uh, before that happens and it just kind of ends. Chapter three. Um, okay, so I don't really know what any of this has to do with the rest of the book because it's not done. However, there is a Mexican maid stereotype, which you know, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm Latino. I don't really, I don't really care. Uh, Latinos make fun of Latinos all the time. Uh, anyway, the Latina is described as curvy despite not having any children, which is something Onision mentioned. I'm not mentioning that. It's a weird thing to mention when you mention that curviness is dependent on child reardness. However, I don't even think we need to mention that because it's a certified fact that Latinos are double cheeked up. When I walk past the mirror, I always make sure to stop and check out my cake. Anyway, nothing really happens in this chapter. That's about it. I just wanted to mention how weird it was that he mentioned that having children makes, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> chapter four and five are again semi-related, but there's some more non-con here, but now Kane is back in the picture and Kane staying hot from the time when Olivia was a child to when Olivia is an adult is a little weird. And I'm not really gonna like dig into the logistics of that, but clearly they're supposed to like hook up at some point. They don't, cause I don't have the full book, but you know, that that's that. Uh, basically what happens is that the Crypt Keeper thinks he found a new crypt, uh, but that feeling is not mutual. Um, Olivia's crypt is off limits, but for some reason, all that vitriol and violence she had for the small Native American child is gone in the face of uh, Halloween monsters. So, you know, there we go. <laughs> I, I really don't have high standards for erotic literature. I don't know why you would, but this is legitimately bad erotic literature. I, I, I'm saying that in the most academic way possible. This is not fun. This is not 
steamy. It's not a fun time. I'm not enjoying myself. Like, I got a lot of problems with this book. You know, it's weird. It doesn't make any sense. There's a lot going on that's just incredibly strange and uncomfortable. But he here's the thing, right? When you write a book like this, you need to allow time for things to breathe. It's almost as if the chapters exist to specifically get to the steamy bits, but you actually need the build up into context there to make any of these things satisfying and meaningful to the reader. You know, you need to have that build up. It's a bit of, uh, l let's use the nomenclature of erotic literature here. Let's say we need to uh, build up using the foreplay of language in order to make the uh, explosion of action worthwhile. Sometimes I'm proud of myself and how I explain things. I think we should all clap for that. But you know, you can't keep it full mast in your story 100% of the time. You need to break it up, have something else going on. Breaking it up does not mean switching from a consensual moment to a non-con moment, you know? It's, like, what does Olivia do aside from either be a, a, a homicidal person or be a victim of crime? You know, like this is great writing advice for anybody, but you need to break up events with variety to keep it engaging. If it's just the same thing over and over and over, why would I keep reading? I'll get in like a few chapters and go, I've kind of got my fill. He here's a personal example. I read a lot of 40K books, right? You know, uh, one feature of 40K is the Bolter and the Space Marine. These are like big guys and they do a lot of fighting, right? And you know, when the, the, the best books about Space Marines feature other things than just Space Marines being cool and fighting. You know, there's multiple threads of non-Space Marines to break it up, give context to the Space Marines in conjunction to normal people. You know, it, it's not a book about shooting. The shooting is important, but it's those things around a shooting that make the shooting memorable and, and, and you can remember it better you know it's like you can't just make a movie up of like cool moments there needs to be quiet things in between that matter to make the cool moments matter Olivia needs something to chase after there needs to be a point B dropped in here somewhere for Olivia to shoot for obviously she's nuts that needs to get packed away you know I, I mean you know what if Olivia is gonna be like a bad person and this is about her getting something out of life while still being a bad person. Let's stick with that. Let's work with that idea and create something about it. So maybe now, instead of Mario dropping dead, Olivia is a murderer of bad men because of how she's been treated in life, right? So now it's kind of retribution, revenge, and she targets men who take advantage of women. But Kane is kind of, you know, this bad, aspect that she likes, you know, she, he's a good guy. And so now she's caught in between the romance with Kane and her duty to the women, right? That she wants to get revenge and protect these women. Meanwhile, Kane is a cop who's trying to find out who this romantic serial killer is. But the twist is, is that they've been seeing each other all the time. And they're basically right underneath each other's noses playing this game of cat and mouse as Olivia kills people, but Kane is always on her tail. And you know, the hot steamy moments could be about how they're on opposite sides of the law, but they still care about each other. Yeah, there's so much you could do there. I mean, that's kind of like a Catwoman, Batman thing, but sure, why not? We don't need to reinvent the wheel here. We're here for a good time, not for, you know, Pulitzer Prize winning literature. But hey, you know, I don't think Onision's finishing this book. I think it was more of a self-indulgent exercise in adult writing. Uh, the book is written like the guy writing it doesn't understand uh, intimate moments. Uh, it, it's bad, but we all knew it was gonna be bad going into it. I don't think you'd click on this video and think, man, I hope this book is good. Uh, but hey, man, I mean, Onision's a weird guy and he's slowly fading into the background. At least now we have Quantum TV and EDP 445 to fill the gap that he's gonna leave. Anyway, if you found this video interesting, watch my video on the Maxwell trial. Peace and subscribe.